Well, joining me live is Professor Jason Kovacic, Executive Director of the Victor Chang Cardiac Research Institute and cardiologist at St Vincent's Hospital in Sydney. Thank you, Professor, Thank you. for joining us on the anniversary of Shane Warne's passing a year ago and condolences, of course, to mm. his family, his friends, everyone mm. around the world mm. who loved him mm. so dearly. Mm. Mm. Such a tragic passing. Uh, and, of course, our, our sentiments do go to the family and their condolences. But, of course, it wasn't also just Shane Warne, mm. Senator Kimberly Kitching, Rod Marsh, um, others. Todd Woodbridge had a heart attack, thankfully survived. But there's been many people, and, and this has served to really heighten the awareness of the importance of heart health checks and things we can do to avoid having heart attacks like this. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we know the wonderful Greg Page, who the you know mm. the former Yellow Wiggle, who right. has certainly campaigned and continues to do mm. so, and, and organisations mm. and yourself as well doing mm. amazing work. Mm. You know, this tragic death of Shane, as you mentioned, um, you know, it really has inspired so many people to go and get their mm. hearts checked and we're seeing mm. a huge increase in men getting their heart health checks as well aren't we yeah it's been great that you know from the tragedy of shane warren we've seen an increase in about 25 percent over the last year of people getting their heart checks done by their gps and this involves getting blood pressure cholesterol glucose and a history about smoking exercise weight and so on and then it enables the gps to really tailor a package to improve heart health Treatments for blood pressure, cholesterol and glucose are so simple and so safe now. There's really no reason not to do that. So it has been, you know, encouraging to see this increase in heart health checks and people getting checked for this problem. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but heart disease is still the number one leading cause of death in Australia. It has been for, for years. It's been that way for a long, long time. Heart disease is the number one killer in both men and in women. What was really interesting over the first eight months of 2022, we saw over 10,000 deaths from heart attacks and blockages of the arteries. And that was actually 17% more than was actually even predicted. So the problem is actually really significant. And for unknown reasons, perhaps related to COVID or effects of COVID, we saw an increase through the first part of 2022 in these heart attack and heart attack related deaths. And a few studies are coming out where a few people are sort of saying that perhaps their lifestyle wasn't what it used to be. They might have been eating a little bit more, not exercising as much, under mm. a lot more pressure. Right. Plus also having COVID and the effects of that mm. virus mm. affecting your heart. Absolutely, Janie. I think it's that intersection. of we, We've all heard about the COVID kilos. You know, working from home is great, but people don't tend to move around as much. They don't, you know, even leave the home sometimes. People also with Zoom and Teams, they just, you know, tend to sit there watching the monitor and I'm guilty of that myself. Whereas before we used to move around a lot more. So I think increased weight, that leads to blood pressure, cholesterol, glucose and so on and these trickle on effects. Plus perhaps the virus itself, we know that COVID itself was actually a trigger for heart attack. So this is all interrelated and a really a phenomenon of the last few years. You make a good point, don't you? Like people just sitting at a Zoom a meeting and so forth it's those little incidentals as well the exercise that you don't sort of count right. walking to work walking right. to you know get a, a glass of water in the office or what have you like those little bits can also add up absolutely i mean we're meant to get ten thousand steps a day it's really easy if you're just on zoom meetings to get two thousand three thousand and fall way short of that target so mo lack of movement is a real problem and that's leading to obesity, blood pressure, cholesterol and so on. So getting these things checked and attending to them is really important for heart health. Yeah, not to mention, you know, stress, people's cost of living and all of those pressures and everything. Just Absolutely. Snowballing. The Victor Chang Cardiac Institute is running heart health check services to the community. Tell us about those checks. Right, what's been really interesting, we've been doing this for well over a decade now and from when we started about a decade ago through to 2020 when COVID hit, the rates of us finding a high blood pressure, cholesterol or glucose was pretty stable at around 30%. Since COVID, we've tested about 6,500 people and that rates of positive glucose, cholesterol, blood pressure that need to get referred to a GP for treatment has now increased significantly to almost 50%. So we're seeing this reflection of increase in risk factors through the time of COVID, which, which really I think mirrors what we're saying about people not exercising, putting on a few kilos, increased stress and so on. That's leading to an increase in risk factors, which we believe is likely tied into that increase in deaths we're seeing. So 
it's a sort of perfect storm, if you like, of COVID, COVID-related factors, increasing risk factors, blood pressure, cholesterol and glucose. We're seeing an increase in death. So it's a really big problem, but makes it all that more important to get that heart health mm. check done. Now, this is a general question and it's probably hard to sort of answer in, at, you know, with one sort of answer, but if you do have elevated blood glucose levels and, you know, cholesterol and so forth, mm. if how easy is it to change those levels mm. as opposed to, you know, changing your lifestyle factors? You know what right. I mean? Like it's, right. it's a hard right. question to answer in right. one, but is it quite easy if you really do start exercising more and, right. you know, have Absolutely. a better diet? Absolutely. They are, they are actually manageable by lifestyle measures. So blood pressure, cholesterol and glucose are all tied into being overweight. And if you can exercise more, reduce weight, you can control those factors. But the other side of the coin is we've actually had medications to treat those three factors for decades now. They're incredibly safe, incredibly cheap, incredibly effective. So I do encourage my patients to try lifestyle measures. Life is what it is, and it's often hard to lose weight. We all know that. It's hard to get regular exercise every day. So, you know, I give them a few months, and if they're not successful, we start these medications knowing that they're really effective and they can really help reduce the risk of heart attack. Mm. And last time we spoke, there was a test that you can get for cholesterol. Right. There's an additional form of cholesterol called lipoprotein A. So the regular cholesterol panel checks for the bad form of cholesterol called LDL cholesterol but there's a second bad form of cholesterol called lipoprotein A. We've known about it for a couple of decades, but in the last few years, we've really appreciated how important it is. And there are specific therapies just around the corner to manage and treat lipoprotein A. So we are encouraging specific groups of people, those that have early onset heart attack, those with strong family histories, um, those that have had premature heart attacks before the usual age groups, that they should consider getting tested for lipoprotein A. Right at the moment, it's a bit complex because it's not reimbursable, so there's no Medicare item number for it, so it's an out-of-pocket expense, but it's only about $30 or $40. So if people can afford it and they're one of those risk groups, it's really important to get that checked because it is an important, independent cause of heart attack. And what about symptoms for men and symptoms for women? Right. Talk us through the difference. Janie, great question. So the classic presentation of a heart attack is this crushing chest pain. Feels like you've got an elephant sitting on your chest. It may go down the arm up to the jaw. Men get that most of the time. Women get that some of the time. So women may present with just shortness of breath or generalised fatigue or maybe pain in the belly, pain in the back. It can be very variable. Doctors are getting a little better at picking this up and it's important for us as physicians to be really always tuned into the proposition that a patient could be presenting with a heart attack but anyone that's got those kind of troubling symptoms should seek urgent medical care. And I guess it doesn't really matter about age does it? I mean it can happen at any age. Right it's a common misconception. Mm. The average age for heart attack is sort of mid 60s but people can present with heart attacks in their 30s and 40s and I've seen many patients with that specific genetic problems that cause really high cholesterol or other things can present at a younger age. So it's important just because you're in your 30s, if you've got crushing chest pain, you still need to seek medical attention. Mm. Well, always great to see you. Thank you for your time and expertise, Jason Kovacic. Thank you, Thank you Jane. Right. Great to, to see, see you. Soon.